Hello, 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 happy crafters. It's me, Lisa, the DIY Diva. And today I'm gonna to be sharing with you 25 different hacks that you can use in your home that will help make your cleaning and organizing so much easier. So let's get started. It all just goes away. And things are to say. Oh, baby. We have well water, so our water is really hard. And these are my sinks, and I have tried everything to get these clean, but I've never tried white vinegar. Did you know that white vinegar can actually remove hard water stains? Yes, and that hard water buildup. So all you have to do is take a paper towel, soak it in some vinegar, and just put it on the area you wanna focus on. Now, if you have really built up hard water, you may have to use a scrubber like I'm doing right here, but I'm telling you, this is an easy way to get rid of those hard water stains and deposits that happen in your sinks if you have hard water. Just be sure to test it out first and make sure it's not going to damage the finish of whatever you're trying to remove the hard water from. But I had no problem using it on my black faucet. and even the nickel color plated metal that I have in my bathroom. Have you ever used e-cloths? Oh my goodness, these things are incredible. You can find them online and they don't use any chemicals. It has the cleaning cloth and then it also has a polishing cloth. All you do is get it wet and then you use it. They have them for windows and you can see the before and after. They also make them for granite and stone. You just add water and then you clean the area and then once you're done cleaning it with the cleaning cloth, then you use the polishing cloth to polish whatever it is that you're cleaning. Yes, it's two steps, but there's no chemicals involved. Just water and a little bit of elbow grease and it works great. I even used the stone cloth on my dishwasher because my dishwasher was really dirty. And even if I used different cleaners on it, it still didn't get it clean. But by using the e-cloth, it was an easy, easy fix to make my black dishwasher actually look clean and shiny. Look at the results, oh my gosh. Just a little bit of water in these cloths. They are so incredible. And one thing I noticed while I was cleaning my dishwasher is in the little crevice, that little crevice where underneath the like control panel, I had no idea how much gunk had gotten in there. So I took a couple of these scrub buddies and a few skewers from the Dollar Tree. And I just took one of the scrub buddies. This is the Dollar Tree version of the Swiffer pads that go on. So I just took that and I wrapped it around a little skewer. And then I just cleaned that crevice all the way around on my dishwasher. And like I said, I cannot believe how much gunk came out of it. I thought it was clean because I do clean this, but apparently I haven't been cleaning it well enough but these Scrub Buddy Swiffer pads and a skewer are awesome for getting the gunk out of the little cracks and crevices that are on the appliances and basically anywhere in your house. I know that's not very appealing to look at and please don't judge me on my housekeeping skills, but I just wanted to show you, even though it looks clean, if you really look close and pay attention, you may find, like me, it may not be as clean as you thought it was. But once you get it done, oh my gosh, you can't unsee that.
And if any little remnants fall onto the floor, you can just use that little Swiffer pad and just clean them up. Super easy. And I also have really dark cabinets and I found these lights at the Dollar Tree. They're LED lights. They are so handy. They include the Velcro that you just place wherever you want it to go. If you take one piece of the Velcro and stick it to a wall or inside of a cabinet, then the other piece goes on the light and you can add light to places where it's a little bit dark, like this closet. Or if you have an older home like mine, you'll have big cabinets. And look, just by adding a little bit of light to the area, you can see everything underneath the cabinet, including the products that are knocked over. Those aren't organized, I better straighten those out. And we have really deep cabinets where we store our Tupperware and containers, so I added in one of those lights and it makes such a difference. Microwaves get dirty, really dirty. And again, please don't judge me, but this is our microwave. And it can be time consuming to clean out the microwave. Unless you try this, it's so simple. You just take a cup of water and a cup of white vinegar and put it into a microwave safe container. Then start your microwave for three minutes and just let it go. Now don't open the microwave, but set your timer for five minutes and then you can do another project in your kitchen. And once your five minutes is up, you simply get a wet rag and wipe away any of the remnants that are in your microwave. This is so easy. I literally just wiped off all of that yucky stuff that happens to collect in the microwave and it was clean. This took me about 10 minutes total to clean out a dirty microwave. And I think you can see I'm not using very much pressure. I'm just wiping off the walls, the ceiling, the back, everywhere inside the microwave with a damp cloth. And I think the end results speak for themselves. Look at this, this was such a quick clean out and it was very easy to do. And my microwave is beautiful, including the door. Now I love Febreze, but it's kind of expensive. So I decided to make my own and I'm going to be using these Downy Unstoppables. And I love recycling, so I'm going to go ahead and repurpose this Ajax cleaner bottle. That's gonna store the homemade Febreze. And I just put a funnel on the top and I put a half a cup of the Unstoppables and a quarter cup of white vinegar and two tablespoons of rubbing alcohol.
and then I just filled the rest of it with some distilled water. Now the unstoppable beads can get stuck in the funnel, but all you have to do is pour some liquid into the funnel, but they flow easily once you put a little bit of liquid into the funnel. Now it will take a few minutes for the unstoppables to break down and become a liquid form, but just put a sprayer onto the bottle and give it a shake and let it set for a few minutes and you'll have your own Febreze. It smells really good too. Now, I don't know why, but wrinkles in my bed really bother me. So I don't like them. So I'm gonna take my homemade Febreze and I'm just going to use my spray bottle and spray this on my sheets as I'm making my bed. You can see all of the wrinkles in the bedding, but by spraying the Febreze on first, then I can pull the sheets and kind of stretch them out and all of the wrinkles disappear. And I get the added benefit of my bed smelling really good. And I do this with every single layer. So the fitted sheet and then also the top sheet. And I also do it right on the folded edge of the top sheet where I fold it down over the blanket. And then I pull the bedspread up. And give it a few sprinkles of the homemade Febreze and then just pull everything down. And then I also do a little bit on our pillows and I tell you it smells so good and it just, it's really fresh and the wrinkles are not nearly as prominent on my bedding. I really like the finished overall look that it gives to the bedding in our bedroom. Now, if you're looking for an easy way to organize things in your closet, go to Dollar Tree and buy a few of these shoe organizers. I love these things. They work great for shoes, but they also work great for things in closets. Like right now, it's winter time and we spend a lot of time outside and we have lots of different gloves and hats and the shoe organizer helps to keep everything organized and we know where all of the gloves and the hats are. And the shoe organizers are easy to hang using Dollar Tree hooks. Cleaning ceiling fans with pillowcases is a genius idea. I take it a step further though, and I, and I can't believe how dirty my ceiling fan is. This is, oh, that's really, please don't judge me. But I take a little bit of dusting spray and I spray that onto the fan blades first before I use the pillowcase. So it's going to keep all of those dust particles together as I remove them from each blade. And the pillowcase is a really nice trick to capture all of that dust so it doesn't go all over my bed. And the dusting spray will help to keep the fan blades clear longer. I wanted to try this denture tabs for cleaning the toilets. So like I said, we have really hard water. 
and I used denture tabs for cleaning other things, which I'll show you later, but I wanted to see how well it would work in my toilets. And no, that's not dirt, that's a hard water stain. So I let it sit for a couple of hours before letting it run. And well, unfortunately it didn't help the hard water stain, but it did get the toilet bowl nice and clean. I know you've used magic erasers and they have these really thin magic eraser sheets and I never thought to use them on appliances, but our toaster was really dirty. So I decided to try a magic eraser thin sheet and see if I could make it clean. And it did take a little bit of scrubbing, but it wasn't very hard. And I just worked my way around the stainless steel portion or the, the shiny portion of the top of the toaster using the magic eraser. And look at that, it really did a fantastic job of removing all of that debris that was on the top of the toaster. The magic erasers I found work really well on metal and I didn't notice any scratches. Now the plastic part of it, not so much, but the rest of the toaster, it worked really well on the metal parts to get it nice and clean and look a lot better. That is a much improved toaster. Now I have another tip for cleaning the cracks like between your countertops and your stove. Debris really tends to build up in these areas. So again, I'm going to take those little scrub buddies wet cloths. And I'm gonna open it up and using a knife, I'm just going to put the knife between the crack. Oh, that's really gross. But yeah, look at all that debris that gets in there and it didn't look that dirty. But now I know it's really clean. So this is a really easy way to make sure that in between your countertop and your stove stays clean. It is such a big improvement. And it was very simple to do. Okay, so the denture tabs don't work great for hard water, but this is so much fun. If you take white vinegar and pour that into your toilet and then add some baking soda, oh my goodness, this is so much fun. Look at all of, <laughs> look at all of the foam it creates. And that foam is actually deep cleaning the toilet. So use about a cup of white vinegar and then just pour in some baking soda and you will be able to deep clean your toilet in no time. I let that set for about 20 minutes and then I use my toilet scrubber and just give it a good scrub all the way around the entire toilet bowl. And then I just set the brush on the edge of the toilet and close the lid. So not only will that help all of that water to go out of the toilet bowl brush, but it'll also let my husband know that, hey, this toilet is being cleaned. But I think you can see the results. It works really well, just vinegar and baking soda. 
Now this is a fun tip. Okay, so we have horses and we feed them carrots every single morning and evening. And my knife, well, it's really dull. I think you can see how dull it is. But an easy way to sharpen your knives is just take some rice. This is jasmine rice. I don't know if it matters if it's like long grain rice, instant rice, or jasmine rice. And put it into a container. And then put your knife into it and just go up and down with the knife and it will actually sharpen the dull blade. I know that might sound silly, but I promise it works. This is my knife after I have sharpened it and look at that, so much better. And I just keep that rice on my countertop so that way I can sharpen any dull knives. And if you have a stainless steel sink, all you need to do is take a lemon and cut it in half. And then just take some salt and put onto the lemon. Then you can easily clean your sink. You don't have to use a lot of pressure. I just used a circular motion all around the sink. It helps to break up grease and get rid of stains that are in your sink. I think it's because of the acidity of the lemons, but it works really well and it gives a really nice polished shine to stainless steel sinks. And if you've watched this far of the video, thank you. I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel. Just click the subscribe button and then click the bell notification and you'll be alerted every time I have a new video. Now, once the sink is all scrubbed with the salt and lemon solution, then I just rinsed it out with some warm water. It definitely is a lot shinier and I can't see as many scratches in my sink now. Just a lemon and a little bit of salt and you can have a beautiful sink. Now I love Pottery Barn and I love the way the Pottery Barn stores smell. So if you want to make your house smell like Pottery Barn, all you have to do is cut up some lemons. Fill a pot with water. Put the water onto your stove. Add some lemons and about an eighth of a cup of vanilla. And some rosemary. Now fresh rosemary does work the best. And then you just simmer that in a pot on your stove top. If your home is really dry, it will actually add a little bit of moisture to your home as well. And once your concoction is boiled down on your stove top, don't throw it in the trash, but take it over to your garbage disposal and just put it in the garbage disposal side. Go ahead and run some cold water over it so it's not so hot. Add some ice cubes to the disposal. And then run the disposal. Not only is that going to deodorize your disposal, but the ice cubes will actually help to keep the garbage disposal blades sharp. Now this is what I really like to use my denture tabs for. Our coffee pot 
It seems like no matter how many times you clean your coffee pot, you still get some dark spots in the pot. But once you have your coffee pot rinsed out, if you add some warm water, and a couple of denture tabs, this will help to keep your carafe, carafe, is that how you say that? Nice and clean and no coffee stains. So just put a couple of denture tabs into your coffee pot, let it set for about 20 minutes, and then dump out that water. Then you can use a sponge and a little bit of dish soap to clean any remnants out of the pot. That is a much improved coffee pot and it was so easy to do. No more coffee stains. Now, if you have large rugs, it can be really challenging to keep them clean, but all you have to do is sprinkle a little bit of baking soda all over your rug. And then using one of these little silicone brushes from the Dollar Tree that you attach either to your broom handle or you can actually buy the handles at Dollar Tree too. I just went ahead and bought the handle so I can keep this together all the time. Then I just use that silicone brush to really work in the baking soda into my rug. Not only does that help to get it deeper into the rug, it helps to loosen any debris that's in the rug, like dog hair, because we have a dog that sheds like crazy. And then you let it set for about 20 minutes and then vacuum it up. Now when I vacuum, I do like to use a little bit of essential oils on the filter. I don't know if I'm supposed to do that or not, but I do know that it really makes the house smell good. And then I just vacuum up the baking soda out of the rug. It really helps to get the odors out of your home. You can only clean so much, and this seems to help the rug last even longer. I really like this hack and I think you should try it. It would work on carpets as well as a rug. Do you ever clean your baseboards? I think this is really important and an easy way to clean them is just take a dryer sheet and run that over the baseboard. I know it sounds silly, but you'll get a little bit of the scent from the dryer sheet if you use scented ones. And I find that it helps to keep the baseboards clean for longer periods of time. And even though they don't look dirty, you can see the dust that accumulates quickly on the baseboards. and the dust stays trapped in the dryer sheet, making it easy to throw away. Have you ever considered using shaving cream for cleaning? Oh, it works wonderful. So if you have hard water stains or water spots on your faucets, shaving cream is wonderful for getting rid of those water spots, as well as giving a nice shine to the faucet. And this is shaving cream that I got from the Dollar Tree, so it's a very affordable cleaning option.
And not only does shaving cream help on faucets, but it also works really well on doorknobs and door locks and even light switches. You just put a little bit of shaving cream on and then just wipe it away. A microfiber type towel seems to work the best. But then you get a nice shine on all of your doorknobs. And not only for those type of things in your home, but if you have a stainless steel trash can like we do, it really helps to give a nice shine to the trash can. When I did this, my husband was like, wow, did we get a new trash can? And I was like, nope, I just cleaned it. Oh, this is a fun one. We use sponges in our kitchen all the time. So all I do is take a Dollar Tree soap holder with suction cups and suction cup it to my sink. It helps to keep the sponge up off of the bottom of the sink. And it does work for the larger wands as well, but it does tend to slide. One thing you can do is add a little bit of Vaseline to the suction cup portion of the soap holder, and that does help to keep it in place. Now, if you like being natural and you like using fabric softener, these are wonderful, the Downy Unstoppables. But something that works even better is white vinegar. All you have to do is fill the fabric softener portion of your washing machine with the white vinegar and it will make your clothes super soft. It works great for towels and especially microfiber towels. So you don't lose any of the microfiber cleaning ability. I would highly encourage you to use white vinegar. And essential oils, I showed you earlier how I like to put the essential oils onto the filter in my vacuum cleaner. I don't know if that ruins my warranty, but that's okay because it smells great in my house and I've had this vacuum for about two years and never had any issues. But you can also put essential oils on cotton balls and you can put it in places where you might have an odor, like a trash can. So I'll put some essential oils onto a cotton ball and then I will just keep those in the bottom of my trash can to help keep it smelling fresh. And my last hack for you is recycling sprayers and bottles. Just like I showed you when I was making my homemade Febreze, I had an Ajax cleaner bottle that I got from the Dollar Tree, but I'm gonna keep that because I can use it when I make my own products. I also like to use those products half strength. So if I have the spray bottles, it works perfect. And I always keep all of my sprayers because you can just twist those sprayers onto those Dollar Tree cleaning bottles and you have something easy to use in your home for cleaning. Well, I hope you enjoyed these 25 hacks. A lot of them were cleaning hacks, but it will make your cleaning much easier. You will be so happy with how clean your home is. And because I did use a lot of Dollar Tree cleaning products, I think I'm gonna be sharing with you really soon which Dollar Tree cleaning products are good and which are not. So be sure to subscribe and come back for that video.